want to talk to somebody, but stay with us, Joel, because I don't want you to leave okay. entirely. Hi, Leslie. Uh, thank you for joining Hi. us. I, I just, I just want to know. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for being here. But I, I, you obviously think that that California's gone to that tipping point that Joel Cochran was talking about, where people aren't willing to pay a premium of 40 and 50 percent in order to live in the state. Uh, do you think that what you are doing now in opposing some of these tax rise initiatives uh, is going to spread into something much deeper and much broader that could change the state? Oh, yes, definitely. And just to let you know, I'm from Michigan originally, and right. I fled Michigan to come to California because this is where the prosperity was. This is where new businesses were starting. This is where I completed my college education and got a wonderful consulting job, and I've been very successful for quite some time. But because of a whole lot of uh, uh, budget policy on the national and state level, I'm now out of a job. So I spend my time organizing tea parties and getting people aware of the dire situations Sacramento and Washington, D.C. By the way, if you're out of a job, how do you make ends meet when you're doing what you're doing now? Well, unfortunately, my husband still works, and I clip coupons, and I'm not buying a new car, and I'm finding dozens and dozens of ways to cut back on all my personal expenditures. And I would kind of like the California legislature to take a clue and start cutting back on some of their expenditures. Well, now, this is an initiative. You, what you are doing, you're, you're actually against the initiatives that are, that are being put up for a vote. And when do you think you're going to get around to putting an initiative on the ballot so that you can be in favor of actually lowering tax rates, something that, that as Joel was saying and others say, including yourself, would make California more vibrant? Well, first things first, we have to win this battle, and Tuesday hopefully we'll come about with a victory. There were over 15,000 people in Corona this weekend, and they were all voting no on the propositions, including several hundred uh, throughout various 15 cities in, in, San, uh, in California. We have protests in Redland today, protests in uh, the Inland Empire on 4th and Millican, and we're making people aware that we're finally watching our government representatives. Once this settles down and once we have a cachet and prove that we can do this, the next step is budget reform, a serious spending camp like we had with the Gann Amendment before the unions gutted it through a series of 1988 propositions using fair tactics similar to what they're using in this current proposition suite cycle. How are, how are you drumming up support, Leslie? Are you knocking on doors? What are you doing? Oh, uh, no, no. This is new. This is going through the Internet, through Facebook, through my web pages. We SoCalTaxRevoteCoalition.org. A uh, bunch of different organizations up and down California have their own web pages, have their email lists, shooting out emails, shooting out notices, where to meet, what, what people are doing, the politicians, what they're up to. We have an eagle eye on Sacramento now, and they aren't able to do closed-door deals, you know, hiding legislation that will extend tax increases on us anymore. We can get the word out, we can get people on the phone on faxes, and we can vote this kind of stuff down so it doesn't continue. Well, by the way, we were talking about schools with Joel Cochran. He said that you're not getting the bang for your buck, that, that you know, spending more money is not an answer here. And I should note, by the way, the California Teachers Association are for these amendments. They, of course, want a lot more money given to the state for education. What's your feeling about that? Well, I think education, uh, it's the unions that are real trouble. They've used fear tactics before. Like we're, what? We're Be specific, Leslie. What have, they, what have they said? They're going to have to cut teachers and increase class sizes, but you have to understand the unions make deals. A lot of it's bureaucracy. A lot of it's administrative services that are, are redundant, that can be streamlined. Um, you can take a look that a lot of the money isn't going into classrooms. It's going to support heavy-duty administration and bureaucracies. That, and, and there's uh, examples of the Los Angeles uh, represent teachers union uh, leader who polishes shoes in his office. And and it's a waste of money. And uh, not only that, you see results like Los Angeles uh, County has 50% dropout rate. So we're not getting any bang for the value. And what kills me is that we've lost population. We've lost students. Um, and, and the teachers say they need more teachers, but we're losing the students because everybody's emigrating out because of the high taxes. Right. By the way, for, for viewers who don't know, California spends 40% of its entire budget, which, which is humongous, on education, about 30% on K through 12 and about 10% on higher education. So within that figure, we're talking billions of dollars here, 
you, you bet that there is a lot of bureaucracy. By the way, stay with us, Leslie. Want to bring in a panel here. We have Republican strategists, Margaret Hoover and Fox Business's uh, Tracy Burns. Margaret is, is, Leslie's an eloquent spokesperson, obviously uh, doesn't have a lot of experience in politics, but she's learning quickly. Do you think there's a movement here, the beginning of a movement? I think Leslie is representative of something that is going on all across the country, and especially in California. We even saw during the Tea Party debacle in, on April 15th, California was one of the most organized states. I mean, they have been organizing for a long time because they have a real reason yeah. to organize. Their legislature is not serving them well, and their government isn't serving them well at all. And I Tracy, you listen to the talk of some of their legislators, and, and they're saying, you know, you have to trust us. This is one a state senator in, uh, from uh, San Francisco says, to talk about any kind of taxes is a difficult thing, but we need to have an honest conversation with people. I mean, folks just don't believe they can be honest. Well, because Leslie made the perfect point. She's cutting coupons. She's doing her civic duty to save money. California is not. The, our government is not. I mean, California is a microcosm of the bigger picture. They're not cutting spending. California needs to institute, like, some cap on spending get jobs back to this state, otherwise there will be a massive Well, Joel, when I, when I listen to Leslie, Joel Cockin, uh, I hear somebody who's learning very quickly, and I'm wondering if she is typical of the kind of people you've met who are organizing against these initiatives. Well, I, you know, I, ha I don't really follow so much what's happening with the initiatives. What I find very interesting is just conversations I have with people. Most of the people I know uh, are pretty liberal, so like you're living in New York, I'm living in um, the Studio City, uh, uh, Sherman Oaks area, um, and I'm amazed how many people are angry about the, n not necessarily just a level of taxation, but the poor quality of services. And then the other part of the picture really is the business climate. The reason we're in so much trouble is we do not generate enough income in this state to, p to pay our bills. Um, the businesses have been leaving, um, the, the sort of movement of one industry after another, particularly as companies that are based here expand, they expand somewhere else where the taxes are lower, where the regulations are better. And what's really interesting is that the state government, and this is, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is very much in the middle of this, um, is creating more and more very strict regulation, which is, which is chasing business out. I spoke to an attorney friend of mine yesterday who represents a lot of developers and industrial companies, he said people would be crazy to locate in California today because you don't know what kind of regulatory yeah. problems you're going to have. The regulation may even be a bigger problem than the taxation. Well, Leslie, let me, let me go back to you because a lot of people, when Schwarzenegger came in, a lot of people who harken back to the Reagan era, back when he was governor, thought maybe we'll have a redo with the with the, the governor, and it didn't turn out to be that way. Is there anybody that you see either in the legislature or maybe somebody running for governor who you would trust to do what you think needs to be done to get the books in order? Uh, I'm glad you asked me that because I'm thinking about our future and Chuck DeFore of our assembly, he, he's the assemblyman for the Irvine district. He is, um, I'm going to say, a really aggressive, determined, savvy legislator. Really fiscally a lot of smarts, knows where to trim the budget, knows where our problems are. Uh, he actually called for the resignation of Michael of the Lines, the, he the minority leader of the Republican mm. caucus in our state legislature, and aggressively went after him for betraying praying all the Republicans who put uh, the, uh, the Republicans who voted him in uh, the lines in and uh, he's running for senator against Boxer right. and I think he comes from the Reagan administration and people I always ask what does Reagan do well I think in 40 50 60 years they're gonna ask what Chuck would do because he uses YouTube all the Facebook all the internet resources he has a great sense of humor and is, like I said, sharp as attack on financial right. issues. Well, he's maybe he's, he's, one, he's one to look for. But the interesting thing, and finally, we really got to run, but I got to ask you, Margaret Hoover, nobody trusts either party. It's the Republicans or the I Democrats. Am, I am so glad you mentioned this because what's happening in California also is they have gerrymandered districts. And so there's nobody in the legislature. Everybody's so entrenched. They are extremes from both sides, and nobody's being practical or pragmatic. They should throw them all out. Well, and it looks like since they have the initiatives, they have the power to vote on these things and Leslie Eastman and other people like her are doing just that. Thank you very much.